Coyote Partners, lay out your bedroll and rustle up some grub, because we got some crazy goings on a coming at you faster than a doggie running from the red hot brand and iron. Have you gone completely mad? Come on, Daria, get on the western tip. Um, I've got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle. No, no, no. Watch me. Next up is Speed Trapped, where yours truly, Calamity Jane Lane, saddles up for adventure in cowboy country and ends up lassoing myself a mighty heap full of trouble. Alrighty. You betcha. Yippee-io. All right. Oh boy, here they come. Here they come. Careful, Miss Knievel. If you break any bones, I won't be able to trade you in for a new one. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Natalie. Did you get a new bike? Yeah, it's got dual-fly tires, independent suspension, heavy-duty shocks, and 24 synchro mesh gears. Really? That's good, right? Only if you want to be really, really cool. See ya. Who's that? Natalie. She's a second grader. Ah, woman of the world. No, she loves you. Daddy, can I have a new bike? Catherine, this is a new bike. Nuh-uh. I got her on my birthday. Which was four months ago. But my bike doesn't have suspenders or socks or any cool stuff like Natalie's. What are you talking about? Your bike has the coolest thing of all. What's that? You riding it. Daddy. Catherine, you're fortunate to have a bike at all. When I was your age, I had this old beat-up thing I rode to school. No, I... you didn't. I didn't? No, you told me you had to walk to school every day, even in the snow. And that was four miles to school and four miles back. And it was all uphill, both ways. Uh, right. That was before I got a bike for having a perfect attendance record. But I didn't have a brand new bike like you. See, mine was old. It didn't even have a seat. So I used an empty paint bucket to sit on. And that was the first ever bucket seat. <laughs> so what I'm saying is... I know you're saying that you were happy with what you had. Exactly. I'm sure glad I didn't live back then. So, about a new bike. Justin, I did not smile at Alex Featherheel during history class. He smiled at me. In fact, I'm not even sure if it was a smile. No, I wasn't even looking at him. Uh, excuse me. Hold on a minute. Daddy, I'm on the phone. I, I see that. Why is the shower running? I'm waiting for it to get hot enough. Hot enough to do what? Grow orchids? Do you know how much water you're wasting while you're out here talking on the phone? I'm not wasting any water. I'm using it to make steam to get the wrinkles out of a pair of jeans I have hanging in there. You're using gallons of hot water to get wrinkles out of your jeans? It's only water. Now, about me smiling. Do you know how much oil it takes to heat just one gallon of water? How much? Well, it, a lot. And if each person used one less gallon of water per day... I'll call you back. Ralph Nader is making the rounds. You got that right. And here he comes again. Norma, do you ever think that the kids don't appreciate how good they've got it? Uh-oh. What does Angie want now? now? She's up there wasting water like there's an endless supply of it. And, and Catherine... She wants a new bike. She just got a new bike. But she wants one that's cooler. And yesterday, Roy told me he needed another pair of soccer shoes. What's wrong with the shoes he has? They're black. He said they don't go with his blue uniform. What did you tell him? I told him to find a team with black uniforms. Maybe they are starting to take things for granted. Yeah. You know, Norma, when I was a boy... <laughs> I know, sweetheart. You wore out all your shoes walking to school. Hello there. Good afternoon. My name is Carlton Pendergast, and... Look, before you go any further, I just want to tell you that I admire your initiative, getting a part-time job so you can earn your own money and buy your own soccer shoes. But, unfortunately, we already subscribe to more magazines than we have time to read. Uh, magazines? Oh, magazines! <laughs> yeah, you think I'm selling mag... <laughs> that is funny! <laughs> I'm an attorney. An attorney? <laughs> now that is funny! <laughs> what? Oh! You're serious? Serious as my student loans. Well, uh, what can I do for you, Carlton, or uh, uh, Mr. Pendergast? Thank you. Actually, sir, I need to speak with your wife. Normal? About what? It's a legal matter, sir. If this is about her little fender bender in the market parking lot last month. No. The one in front of the school the month before that? Nope. Oh, jeez. What is she plowing to now? Uh, Norma? 
This is Carlton Pendergast. He's an attorney, and he's here to see you. Oh, Mr. Pendergast, if this is about what happened in the mall parking lot yesterday, I barely tapped that car. Uh, no, Mrs. Bindleby, this has to do with Cletus Mastin. What did she do to his car? Cletus Mastin, my great uncle? Yes, ma'am. I haven't seen or heard from him in, oh, it must be 30 years. He's my mysterious great uncle who lives in some cabin up in Vermont. He still lives there, right? Uh, no, ma'am, he doesn't. Uh, he finally moved? In a sense, ma'am, he passed away. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it. When did it happen? Uh, a little over a month ago, and my firm is representing his estate. He left his cabin to the Winthrop Children's Home in Vermont, but his will stated that his personal possessions should go to you. I only met him once when I was a little girl. Why me? I don't know the specifics, ma'am. I just know that the title of the cabin transfers in ten days, so if you want anything, you need to get it before then. Here's a key, and here's a map. You think I should go up there? That's really up to you, ma'am. I have no idea what his possessions might be. But if you do decide to go, could I give you some free advice? What? Let him drive. <sighs> What do you think? He's right. I should drive. I mean about Vermont. I think we need to go up there. But I hardly knew him. No one in our family did. He was like a hermit. Mom, Dad, Angie used all the hot water. Did not. Did too. A hermit, huh? Lucky man. He barely had electricity and no indoor plumbing and no hot water. No hot water. Gee, how did he steam his jeans? Very clever. I know what you're thinking. You do, huh? You're thinking that if we went to Vermont and took the kids with us, they'd get a taste of what it's like to live with only the basics, and then maybe they'd start appreciating what they have. You are a mind reader. You should join the circus. Let's go up this weekend. We'll leave right after school on Friday. Okay, good. Ah, actually, I I've got a golf thing next Saturday morning. A golf thing. Arthur, we have a chance to teach the kids a very valuable lesson. Spending a weekend getting back to basics, building a fire for heat and going to the well for water, using an outhouse. You'd pass that up to play golf? What was I thinking? Justin, I'm telling you the truth. Justin? Justin, can you hear me? If you can, I swear I never smiled at Alex Fender Hill. You've got to believe me. I might not make it out of here alive. When will we have service again? Oh, it shouldn't be long. About two days. You're kidding. Two days without a cell phone? What am I going to do? Maybe you'll have to spend the whole weekend talking to your family. Right. Like that'll happen. Oh, come on, Angie. I'm sure you can think of a lot of worse things. As I told you, Angie, that's a pretty big cavity, and we're out of Novocaine. Who cares? Go for it! Oh, Mother, this is the most magical night of my life. I hope it never ends. Oh, my one and only Johnny K. I've been here for five years now, and I have not had an intelligent conversation with anyone, including myself. If you could send someone to talk to me, someone I could share my thoughts with. Uh, what the heck? Worse. No, Mom, I don't think so. Does anyone need to use the restroom? Nope, I'm good. Catherine? Nope. Are you sure? We won't be there for a while, and once we get there, all we have is an outhouse. Oh, what? An outhouse. It's where you go to the bathroom outside. Oh, you mean like I saw Roy do it in the backyard after it snowed. Busted! Huh? Are you sure you don't have to go, Catherine? No way. I want to wait for the outhouse. Oh, here we are. And there it is, the outhouse. Let's go, Mommy. Catherine, we want to go into the cabin first. Can you wait a minute? No, trust me. Angie, would you take Catherine to the outhouse? <sighs> and this weekend just keeps getting better and better. Roy, let's go. Yeah, yeah, in a minute, Dad. I'm almost at level seven. <sighs> it's exactly like I remember it. The light was right over here. Oh, somebody actually lived here? I told you, it was kind of sparse. Sparse? This makes the YMCA look like the Ritz. The kids should really learn a lesson here. Yes, they should. This was Uncle Cletus's room. And this is the guest room. Guest room. Guess that comes in handy when you're a hermit. Hmm? I don't remember this door being here. Oh my gosh. Are you 
sure this is the right house? This is crazy. You're not the boss of me. Now, are we busting your friends out of jail or not? Arthur, this is crazy. What are the kids gonna say when they see this? See what? Uh, nothing. It's even worse than what you see here. I doubt it. Mom, Dad, if you really wanted to teach me about getting back to basics, just take away my makeup for the weekend. You kids are right. This is way too much roughing it for you. Let's go home. We're not going anywhere until I find out what's going on. Whoa. Amazing! Look at that racetrack! First in outhouse, now this? You're the best parents in the world. What did you say your uncle did again? I don't know. I just thought he stayed at home. I can see why. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. DVD, HDTV, Dad, XM, MP3, TiVo. But no cell phone. <laughs> Mommy, look. I'm going to name her Amber. And these are all her brothers and sisters. I'm going to name them all Amber. Cool. Hey, Dad, watch me make it spin out. Have you ever seen a car do that before? Only when your mother drives. Mom, you mean all of this stuff is ours? Well... Cool! This is better than a new bike any day! Well, this was a good idea. Sleep tight, Roy. And no television. Okay, Mom. Good night. And turn off the game, dude. Game, dude. Yes, ma'am. Oh, my little angel. And Amber's. Good night, Angie. Justin, can you hear me? We're sorry. Your call is I think I found the answer. So did I. Just have my social security checks forwarded to this bed. I'm home. I'm talking about how Uncle Cletus could afford all this. Remember those big metal things we passed on the road up here? The ones that look like rusted out grasshoppers? Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out that not too long ago they found a little oil on Uncle Cletus's property. Don't tell me. He was out shooting possum when up from the ground came a bubbling crude oil, that is. Arthur. Black gold. Texas tea. I get the picture, Mr. Clampett. I guess that money explains all this. And this, look. Louis Armstrong, Fats Waller, Jelly Roll Morton, Big Spiderbeck, these seven days are all in mint condition, and we get to keep them? You sound just like the children. That's not why we're up here, remember? Okay, okay. Tomorrow I'll get the kids up at the crack of dawn and take them on a day-long hike. We'll even gather firewood to keep this place nothing but the essential. And we'll lock the back room and keep the kids out of there. Right. Lock it. Back to the basics. Good. Arthur, why is the bed undulating? I have it set to deep tissue massage, and then check this out! Just the basics? Hey, it's basic. Cable. Hmm? They sure got an early start. Hmm? What's going on here? They're supposed to be on a hike. Hmm. Arthur? Arthur! Arthur Bindleby! I was just about to whip Tiger at the Masters. Had my green jacket picked out and everything. What happened to the crack of dawn, the great outdoors, nature? This is outdoors, Augusta National, springtime. The dogwoods are in bloom. Arthur, stop. Do you see something wrong with this picture? No, it's all digital. Hey, look for yourself. 
gonna have to make a couple of trips to get all the stuff home. Home? You actually plan on taking things? Why not? That's what your uncle wanted. Come on, there must be something here you'd like. Not really. Okay, but this big screen is going with me. All right, fine. Since you insist on taking something, this refrigerator is a Polar 3 with sliding shelves and built-in water purifier. I never dreamed we'd actually own one. And this Close Pro 1600 is top of the line. I thought you said a few little things. How will we fit all that in the car? You're right. Bad idea. We'll go into town and rent a trailer. Once again, you read my mind. Hey, that's not fair. Yes. I'm going for a walk. What? What can you find out there that we don't have in here? Someone to talk to other than you. Justin, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? He bought all those things just to be generous, and what do we do? Exactly what we tried to teach the kids not to do. We wanted more and more of it. Guilty. I'd say that Betty knew your uncle better than anyone. I think the kids will hear her better than us, and if they don't, we'll leave them here and let the wolves raise them. Can you hear me now? No, but I can. You're outside the coverage area. The phone company wanted to put in a transmitter up here, but somebody let a protest to block it. <laughs> what a prehistoric Neanderthal. Funny, that's exactly what the phone company called me, too. I'm Betty Everett. I own a small business in town. Angie Bindleweep, I came up here with my family and... You're up at Cletus's place, right? Yeah, did you know him? Shoot, did I know him. We were, uh, neighbors for more than 60 years. Since he passed, I've been keeping my eyes on the place. What was my great-great-uncle Cletus like? Truth is, he could be a cantankerous old buzzard. No offense to your family, or to buzzards. See, Cletus didn't take to people real well, except for the kids. He had children? None of his own. His kids were the children at the Winthrop home. The place he left the cabin to? Yeah. Even after he left Winthrop, Cletus still had a soft spot for everyone who came after him. He was an orphan? You didn't know that? No, my mom doesn't really know much about him. Well then, Miss Angie, how about I help you fill in your family history, and you help me fill up this blueberry bucket? Deal. <laughs> <laughs> What are you two doing? We rented a trailer to take everything home with us. Ha <laughs> ha! That big screen will fit perfectly in the bin, huh? Huh? And I've always wanted a refrigerator and a washer dryer just like those. But mom, didn't we get a new refrigerator a couple of years ago? Well, yes, but this one's got much cooler stuff. And what's wrong with the washer dryer we have? Yeah, mom. Oh, sure, it makes a loud noise and a weird smell when it's overstuffed. But so does Dad, and we're keeping him. And do we really need a big screen TV? The one we have is already like IMAX. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Slow down, slow down. What are you saying? That you kids can take things for yourself, but your mother and I can't? No. What we're saying is, well, mm -hmm. we decided we're not taking anything at all. What? Mm -mm. Do you have any idea where our real children are? The ones who are always saying, I want this and I want that? Look, I met this lady named Betty. Betty who? She was a neighbor of Mom's Uncle Cletus, and she told me a lot of stuff. Like what? Don't take the big screen? Did you know that your Uncle Cletus grew up at the Winthrop home? And that's why he left them this place. And do you know why he built that extra room and put all that neat stuff in it? No, Catherine, why? So the kids can have things that he never had. The staff brings them over here every weekend. This Betty person told you all that? Yes, and we were thinking... Maybe we should leave all this stuff here. Really? Yep. Uh-huh. You're sure about this? Because once we leave, we're not coming back for anything. We're sure. We even take a boat on it. Okay, if that's what you want to do. Well, I guess since they're not taking anything, we really can't either. Yeah. Why don't you kids get your things together and we'll hit the road? Yes! Hey, Dad, do I have time for one last go-around on the slot cars? And I want to say bye-bye to all my Ambers. Sure, honey, go ahead. Make it quick. I just want to get home. Well, I'd say that someone is raising some pretty good kids after all. Ha ha, thank you. Let's put this back on the trailer before they change their mind. Kids, we need to return the trailer. We'll be right back to pick you up. Psst, Betty? Hi. How did it go? I'm still a little numb, but they're going to do the right thing. Well, every once in a while, kids can be surprising like that. Maybe sometimes they just need to be nudged along by someone other than their parents. Thanks, Betty. We owe you. You're gonna owe me a lot more if you don't get that trailer back to me before two. 
And thanks for filling us in on my Uncle Cletus. He was lucky to have a friend like you. Trust me, Norma. I was the lucky one. Mm. It was a pleasure meeting you two. Same here. Now, if we're ever up here again and need to rent something, we'll look you up. Hey, if not, you can look for my stores in Boston and Hartford. You have places there, too? No. I just said you can look for them. What a beauty. Yeah. Ugh, Roy, they got us again. How much longer? How much longer? Be patient, Arthur. After driving all the way up to Vermont and back, you deserve a special thank you. Okay, <laughs> you can look now. Oh. Oh. That's right. There are some things just not meant for children. Mm. Oh, oh, may I have this dance? You can have them all. <laughs>